Good morning, Mega Podlings. It's Crazy Joe. It is a beautiful, sunny Saturday evening, and the sun should be going down shortly. And I have gone out to the movies for the first time since the COVID-19 panic started, and it's a drive-in movie. I haven't been to a drive-in movie since about 2011, but right now it's pretty much the only game in town if you want to go to the movies. And I'm seeing a movie that I had wanted to see, that is The Hunt. It's a double feature. I'm seeing uh, The Invisible Man followed by The Hunt. Both of them are from Blumhouse Pictures. I've seen Invisible Man already. It's one of the year's best films. And I'm going to see The Hunt as well, which I up till now have not seen. I've never been here before. I'm at Becky's Drive-In up in... Uh, Pennsylvania in the Lehigh Valley up around um, Allentown. It's in the Allentown area. First time ever here. And uh, this is uh, this is pretty exciting. I can't remember the last time I've been to a drive-in movie. Uh, we have almost an hour till showtime. You know, you got to get here, get parked. And I'll show you uh, the, the screen we're going to be looking at in just a minute. There it is. This is the screen that will be showing Invisible Man and The Hunt in just about an hour. First movie since the coronavirus panic began and the world shut down. I'm pretty excited to see The Hunt. It's the second film on the bill. I have to sit through The Invisible Man first, which I've already seen. But I, that's not a problem for me because I really, really loved The Invisible Man. Right now I'm in the comfort of my own car, so I don't have my mask on. If I get out, I do need to put my mask on. I have my mask right here, and I think I am going to put it on and go take a little walk because I would like to use the restroom. I had a bit of a drive to get here, and I would like to see what they have at the concession stand. There is the concession stand. Bit of a line. In order to hear the movie, I have to turn my radio to 90.7 FM. All right, I want to see what they have on the menu, but I also want to use the restroom. There seems to be two concession stands. I'm trying to figure out where I want. This one says hot refreshments, and then there's another one that says snack express. There's the hot refreshments. If we look over there, snack express. So which one do I want? Look who I found in the car next to me. It's Adam the Woo's old buddy, Big the Foot. Big the Foot, Adam the Woo's friend, right in the car next to me. What are the odds? All right, the movie is getting ready to start. I'm watching the commercials. It's not quite dark enough for the movie yet. I'm looking at a commercial for Kraft Mac and Cheese, a ride of potatoes. This is exciting though. I'm looking forward to my first drive-in movie in nine years. And it's just exciting being back to seeing a movie outside the home again. I will not be pirating the show as the warning just showed us, but I had to show you the screen a little while the pre-show's going on, right? Like, you had to see that. It's Invisible Man time. Trying to watch a movie here, and some idiot is setting off fireworks in the field next to us. 
can't hear the movie because fireworks keep going off. See? It looks like it stopped now. There we go. This is what we're dealing with here. Trying to hear the movie. The fireworks. That's kind of a pain in the ass. It's intermission time. I moved my car to get closer to the screen. A lot of cars left between shows, so I was able to get a much better spot. So I reviewed The Invisible Man on this channel before. I really like it. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. Unfortunately, it's not a good drive-in movie. Too many scenes in the dark. First drive-in movie I ever saw was in 07 at the Scottsdale Drive-In in Arizona. It was Rob Zombie's Halloween. Terrible, terrible, terrible movie. But I noticed then, because you could see the adjacent screens, you could see the screens next to you, and I noticed then that I could see the screens next to me clearer than the screen I was looking at. And the reason was there were too many scenes shot in the dark, and the night sky and the ambient light washed it out. A brighter movie, which was playing on the screen next to me, you could see better than the darker movie that I was watching. And unfortunately, that's what we have here with The Invisible Man. Great movie, but it's a very, very dark movie with a lot of scenes at night. And I could see Trolls 2 next to me, and that's nice and bright and shiny. And I could actually see the movie on screen too, Trolls 2, better than the one I'm watching. Now, The Hunt is about to start. I've never seen The Hunt before. And I'm hoping this is a brighter movie than The Invisible Man so that I get a better presentation of it than we had of The Invisible Man. But it's about to start. The the uh, intermission is about to end. So let's check out The Hunt. All right, we are back from Becky's drive-in and I want to give you my thoughts on the drive-in and on The Hunt. Obviously, you've seen my review of The Invisible Man. First time I saw it, The Hunt. This is first time I've seen The Hunt. So I got to share my thoughts on that. First of all, Becky's Drive-In. Very nice place. Very nice family-friendly place. I would recommend it. It's about an hour away from me, so I don't know that I'm going to make a habit of going there. I think this was maybe a once-in-a-while thing. Maybe I'll go back again. I'd like to take the kids. I think the kids would get a kick out of it. But uh, generally speaking, it's, it's a haul. It's an hour and 15 minutes to, to go see a couple movies. Is that worth it? I don't know. I'd rather wait for Water Tower Cinema to open up again. Also, you know, you got to get to the drive-in early. If you're going to a drive-in, you got to get there early to get a decent seat or a decent parking spot. I ended up way back and I left early. I left early to get there because I wanted to get a decent parking spot. And still, I ended up way back and uh, I didn't have a really great parking spot for The Invisible Man. And as I mentioned while I was there, The Invisible Man was not a movie that lent itself well to the drive-in experience because it's a very dark movie and therefore it got kind of washed out with the ambient lighting. The Hunt, uh, between movies, I was able to move my car. People left after The Invisible Man, so then The Hunt started. I was actually able to move my car, get up much closer, and uh, the second movie was frankly a better experience all around because I had a better parking spot. It's a brighter movie, so therefore it wasn't as washed out as The Invisible Man. And a lot of cars were leaving. The concession stand closed down, so that means they turned the lights of the concession stand out. There were less ambient light, and um, it, was, it was darker, easier to see the screen. So all around, I would say The Hunt was a better experience. Now, Invisible Man is the better of the two movies, make no mistake about it, but the experience of watching The Hunt at the drive-in was more enjoyable than the experience of watching The Invisible Man at the drive-in. For me, because of where I was parked. But but even if I had been up closer from the get-go on The Invisible Man, it, the colors still would have been very, very washed out because of how many scenes in the dark there are in that movie. So what are my thoughts on The Hunt? Well, first of all, these are both Blumhouse films. Let me tell you, for, as a general rule, I am a fan of Blumhouse. I think Blumhouse does a great job on horror films. They've done some some really good ones over the, the years. We've got uh, 
Oh, geez. Just this year, we had the Invisible Man. Uh, we had uh, our Fantasy Island, which I thought was better than it had any right to be. Um, it was kind of dopey, but it worked. It was like an entertaining dopey. A couple of years ago, they did Truth or Dare. That was a good one. Uh, oh, man. I'm going to draw a blank on all the movies they've done. But they've done a lot of... The, the Happy Death Day movies, they were really good. I mean, they've done some real crap, too, like Black Christmas. Black Christmas was horrible. But I think they've done a lot more good than bad. They 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 know what they're doing at Blumhouse. They know how to make a movie uh, very low budget and very entertaining. Uh, they're not all winners, as I mentioned. Black Christmas was awful, but more of them are winners than aren't. And uh, this was The Hunt's another winner for them. It's really entertaining. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Ready or Not, which I saw earlier this year. Both of them are kind of a takeoff. Ready or Not and The Hunt are both takeoffs on the concept of, like, the world's most dangerous game. You know, the uh, man, hunting man. Man is the most dangerous game. I'm sure you all read the story, The Most Dangerous Game, when you were in high school or something. And they're all takeoffs on that classic story. Uh, Ready or Not is the better of the two. If you're going to watch Ready or Not or The Hunt and you have to just watch one, then you watch, watch Ready or Not. Ready or Not's the better of the two. But The Hunt is still pretty entertaining. It's, uh, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. It's got some political messaging that uh, doesn't feel too heavy-handed on any one side, meaning it's kind of like... It's kind of well balanced, I think. Like there's, it's not, it gets very political, but it's not like, oh, well, the the right wingers are the good guys or the right wingers are the bad guys or the left wingers are the good guys. I mean, it kind of, I, I don't want to get too political here, but I think this movie kind of takes an interesting approach. Let's, let's say that, that it, it kind of shows the, the best and the worst. I, but then again, this isn't to be taken seriously. <laughs> I, don't go don't go looking at a, a silly movie like The Hunt and thinking you're going to walk away with some heavy political message. No, 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 no. Uh, it, it's still, at the end of the day, a dumb movie. <laughs> but it's, it's a good time. It's a good, entertaining time. I really, I had a fun time with it. So, yeah, I recommend The Hunt which I believe is on Blu-ray this week. So check that Blu-ray out when it comes out. And if you're in the, uh, you know, Allentown, Lehigh Valley area, Pennsylvania, stop by Becky's Drive-In. It's a great time. I don't know that it's worth driving um, a couple hours to get to. Like, like I, I was an hour and 15 minutes for me. And I'd probably do it again at some future date. I just, I wouldn't make it like a weekly thing. But uh, if the movie, if they were showing the right combination of movies, I think it's fun enough that I would head out there again sometime. So yeah, I recommend it, especially now in our current environment with the uh, coronavirus where you want to stay socially distant. There's really not a better way to see a movie and be socially distant than a drive-in. You're alone in your car. How could how much more socially distant are you going to be, right? So it's it's kind of ideal for right now. But there aren't many drive-ins around, so it's also not the perfect uh, way to do things for everybody because you probably don't have a drive-in in your area. Like I said, I had to drive an hour and 15 minutes to, to get to this one, and uh, there's people who may have to drive even farther than that to get to a drive-in because there's just not that many drive-ins around. And maybe that's all the more reason to go. Support the ones that are out there because they're not a lot left. I am giving a big high five to Becky's Drive-In. It's a very entertaining way to spend the evening. And I'm giving a big high five to The Hunt. It's worth watching when it hits Blu-ray this week. You, you probably want to, if you're a horror movie fan, if you're a Blumhouse fan, I say pick it up. You're probably going to enjoy it. Keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas with the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone you need. Keep wearing those pajamas. With the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. Oh, oh, it's a trap. Some people call them pigeons. Some people call them jammies. They can 
come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now we're having fun. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now the song is done.